can't get over that Shahuto fight. I don't want to keep bringing it up. I do want to keep bringing it up. It's amazing. I do like the fact that Dana How really crazy was that. Dana really squashed that whole what? best pound for pound thing. What, what oh. Mean? What did Dana say? What are you talking about? Well, Dana really... Let's find uh, out together. I want to find out when the, the UFC Army, UFC Unfiltered Army finds out, Jimmy. Dana, Dana was basically saying that, look, there's been a, he's a great fighter. What he did was amazing, but look at John Jones, the amount of people he's beaten. And, uh, and then he said, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson, because he was talking about combat sports. And I think he mentioned Sugar Ray Leonard. And he mentioned quite a few fighters um, that have been pound for pound you know, it's kind of hard to call yourself the best combat athlete I, uh, ever. But to, to the reach... Amanda the, Nunes um, has beaten up everybody, and Dana mentioned her. It's true. Uh, it, and that's in in the one area. Like, I think his point is, who else is walking around as an Olympian uh, champ, Olympic champion? Yeah, I mean, that's How also many? an amazing... Right, not many. Oh, that's an amazing... I mean, amazing yeah, is true. an understatement. I don't know. I mean, I think that's... I mean, what he's done... Listen... It's also some self promotion, and and he's listen. He's talking shit. He's backing it up, and he's backing it up when nobody's giving him a shot. Yeah. And how many fights in a row? How many fights? In, that's what I like. That's what I love about Shahudo is the that I mean he that, I mean the underdog, and he's been the underdog in like all his in all his fucking fights. Yeah. What I mean with these big fights when it's what he had to go back and beat Demetrius Johnson, and he already lost to Demetrius, so you have that going into it, and then um. With the fight with TJ, nobody, a lot, very few people gave him a shot. Yeah, and I then they call it a fight. fluke or whatever it was. And then you can't say that after what he just did with Marlon, and Marlon's been looking like unstoppable, you know. So it's like I can't. I mean, he just and now so if, for him, when he gets the mic and he wants to call himself what Triple C, with the tri Triple Champion yeah. with the. It's all listen. It's awesome because he's backing it up. He's not talking his shit and and not delivering. Who comes back from a, a a first round like that? Well, he looked really you know good. What I, mean? I mean, I mean, from I mean, he, he's looked good before, uh, but from I remember from Sergio Pettis on, he looked incredible. And again, the fight before that was with Wilson, Wilson uh, Hayes, and before that he had lost to D to Demetrius Johnson and Benavidez. He had dropped two straight, so something must have changed after that second loss. See me once in a while checking my phone. You're checking for Aljo. Well, I understand the same joke. Of course, <laughs> Aljo's a, a character. Yeah. Give me a head bob if he uh uh a head. No, don't give me head bob. I will give me a head bob if fucking somebody spoke to Aljo recently. And is he in route? <laughs> All right. You motherfuckers, leave this in. It's good, dude. Aljo, I knew it. I I had a feeling. Like you know, listen. First of all, it's a new studio, but sure. it is a little closer though. Mm, and Khabib and uh, Poirier <laughs> had their press conference. Now his father, Khabib's dad, is going to be in his corner for the first time in UFC. Oh, that's awesome! And he said, obviously, because uh, they're in Abu Dhabi, and he said, obviously, I have to be Dustin, I have to be Tony Ferguson, I have to be GSP. Um, he wants to become the number one pound for pound. Stop with GSP. It's not happening. GSP is not going to come in and go back down to lightweight and fight you. It's not, not going to happen. Not and he already said he won't go up to feather uh, to welterweight. What he said he's not going. Well, why would he go up to welterweight to fight him though? I mean, that's that's weird. I just don't see a GSP wanting to come back. Well, first of all, and stay at lightweight. Well, the thing is this: I like to be the last guy to beat GSP. So let's just let him stay yeah. retired. I'm only kidding. No, no, no. I love George. I think that uh, if George came back, I'd watch it. But I think, come on, man. I think he's he's done enough. It's so strange. His last man. fight was at what 185. Yep. His last. See, it's so funny that you know when it's almost. It's not your fault, but you're like his last fight. You have to hesitate a second. What he did was fuck. Was was amazing. Incredible. I mean, who? Th I mean, I know nowadays is like almost. It feels like a champ. Champ is coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> yeah. But uh. But to come back and beat Michael Bisping after such a layoff, and the way he did it was nothing short of, I'm going to say the word again. I said it a lot the other day. It's phenomenal, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, it was. It really is. And I used the, I, I'm still getting you, I'm, I'm going to get more comfortable with this fucking soundboard. I look at it and I'm like, I don't trust yeah. me. I'm going to hit the wrong fucking thing. But uh, Khabib, I'm looking forward to the fight with Dustin. I am too. Uh, and eventually, because I feel he's going to pass that test. And I don't like to look too far ahead, but eventually I would love to see him versus Tony Ferguson. Absolutely. I just think Tony Ferguson looks like a machine. And I think the longer the fight, like you really have to get something like, he has to get that Kimura behind his back. He has to get something about to snap. 
Because I don't. Tony's not. Tony's the type of guy like man, like a zombie. Yeah. Just keep, you could just. Cowboy, he was unconcerned with whatever he got caught with with Cowboy. Yeah. And, and nothing slowed him down. It's fucking no. cra- that's crazy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. He seems like a hard guy to prepare for too, because he just throws so many. You can't. He's very unpredictable. Um, you know, he uses his, his feet and his uh, hands equally. He, he's just really fun to watch, and it's fun to watch somebody try to come forward against him because you can't do it for long. You come forward for a couple of punches or a kick, and then you're right back to backing up again. But what I say about GSP is I don't see him after fighting at 185. Is he going to want to go down because Khabib has already said he's not going to go up to welterweight, so he's going to drop 40 pounds for the like and, and fight Khabib? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. To fight it that lightweight, to have to do a weight cut. Again, I'm sure he's not walking around at 200 right now, but that's a drastic weight cut to fight a fucking animal like Khabib. I, I just don't see it. Nah, dude. I don't see it. I, listen, I'm looking forward to his fight with Dustin. Dustin has been on a tear. Yep. And he's taken out top, top, top guys, all the top guys. So it's got that little rocky feel to it. Yeah, it does. You know? And he certainly could... I mean, he's, he's been uh, punching so so well. I, I'm taking Dustin in the second round, like I've said. Now, here's why I'm taking Poirier over Khabib. Because of who he's beaten. Now, again, I know Khabib has won some good fights, too. But, I mean, he, uh, he TKO'd Pettis. He TKO'd Gaethje. TKO'd fucking Eddie Alvarez. And then goes the distance and beats Max Holloway. Poirier has looked unstoppable. Yeah. But who has he fought looking the really... Really uh, put the grappling on him. Put the put him on his ass. Yeah, who? I mean, I would. Who? I would I'm say, uh, who? Yeah, I'm not a fucking owl. Who? 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 Jimmy? Jimmy, look at me right now. Who? <laughs> that's Jimmy, a, that's Jimmy, a good Jimmy, point. Look at me right now. See how jolly. However, I am? we saw what happened when uh, Brian Ortega wanted to put the grappling on fucking. Uh, he wanted to take yeah, uh, Holloway I, down. That I didn't love, work. I love Otega, but Otega is fin- amazing with jiu-jitsu. Yes, great standing up. The wrestling, it, it's not on the level of getting it to the ground. Isn't on the level as of Khabib right. getting it on the ground. That's, you know That's what I mean? true. Very true. Oh, a hundred percent. But I just mean, you, you know, we all have plans, and I just see, I, I see Khabib coming in, Jeez. and I see Poirier landing a booming left in the second round and dropping him. Dude, nobody else agrees with me. I don't want to. Uh... I told Dustin that, and I'm saying it publicly again. I'm calling, and we all know I am frequently wrong. But Jimmy, can I ask you one question, please? Sure. What am I supposed to stir this with? My fucking dick? Excuse me. Too, er- too early a- to be so vulgar. <clears throat> no, it's a fair I'm thing. I'm sorry, people. You want, you want to stir your thing? You're not. I you don't know. A spoon. I don't know. Maybe I'll use a pen. Poor Bob's taking his headphones off. Uh, Bob, the guy's not the errand guy. No, but it's a fair thing. Uh, I'm sorry. We're waiting for Aljo <laughs> Sterling, who's coming in. I don't know about we- Aljo. Why? I don't know. Gut feeling. I know Aljo a little bit. Are you saying the Funk Master may have forgotten? Well, I thought of that this morning, and I'm not. Uh, I'm, you know, it's, I'm not the Booker or anything. Yeah. But um, did anyone talk to Aljo? Well, this is the deal. I thought about that this morning, and I'm on the train, and I go, I wonder if they followed up with Aljo. I go, you know, it's not my job, but. He is a close friend of mine, so I shouted him a text. Hey, man, I'm seeing you today. I didn't hear nothing back. So, like, 11.30. And, again, he's supposed to be here within, okay, like, like by 12.15. Uh, around 11.36, I think it was. Oh, I'm, I'm looking for, I'm catching the train. <laughs> so, it's not, it's not, like, physically, it's not possible for him to make it here in, in that much time. So, he might come in with 10 minutes yeah. left. Yeah, and I got I got to point something out, Jimmy, before we go in. Sure, we are right over there, Bob. The fuck was going on? I love you guys, but what the fuck? What are you, what are you guys doing? I don't know. I think he's moving the. I, Bob, Bob first got me my thing, but I thought it was he's getting my attention. You guys got to realize this. It's almost like that game of playing statue. Like I got the I have the attention span. I'm like I could be talking to you, and it's like that movie, like uh, Up, when the dog's talking and you can hear his voice, and he sees a squirrel. Yeah. He's talking squirrel. So guys, I'm not saying Matt you don't got to move, distracted. but if you act like a, if you, but it's not like, no, I can take a little move, but if it's almost like, if I would have just now, see these little, these little things I got in my hand, a little yeah, they're testicles. They're not my testicles, but it's almost like the guys use that are like calling in the fucking airplane. Yes. In my mind, that's what Bob wasn't doing that. Right. But in but your in mind. in my mind, you might as well put Bob on a runway. Yep. And fucking an airplane runway. I understand. You know? Sure. Not a model. Hold up. Why? That's cute. Where's Listen the car to me. Crash? I don't know. I, was, I, was <laughs> I missed Jimmy. the car crash.
you know, and when Henry goes, I'm the best combat sports athlete of all time. I think that's the right angle. And I think especially on ESPN, people are like, you know, who don't know the game go, oh, that's great. And he has, he has an, an argument. Is it true? I don't think so. And it's the same thing when Mighty Mouse was pound for, I'm the pound for pound goat, uh, pound for pound greatest combat athlete of all time. When you're a Bantamweight, I just think you're, when you're that dominant, especially if you've been doing it for a long time, you're multiple division champion, you're in the top three, four discussion, but it's ridiculous to call yourself that, um, you know, his gold medal, it's a big deal. But also there's, if we're just going off combat sports, like just wrestling in general or boxing in general, dude, what Lomachenko has done in boxing, right, that would be way more impressive. Cause you got to think about this. How many kids right now in the world are fighting MMA? Who knows? Not a big pool. How many kids are who grow up boxing? A shitload. How many kids grow up wrestling? A shitload. So out of all those people, out of all those people, Lomachenko rose to the top. Won gold twice, right? How many amateur fights? Won 500 amateur? I mean, you're talking about a huge pool of athletes, man. A huge, much bigger pool. So that it's way more impressive what he did there. Also, when it comes to combat sports, you're talking about wrestling. There's there's guys who have won four gold medals in wrestling. And you're talking about the creme de la creme, man. They're going through the ringer of the best in the world on the national tour, on the international tour, just fucking doing work against the high level. And they've done it four times. Henry's done it once. Then you go, all right, well, Henry came over and then he's a two division champion. Yeah, that's impressive for sure, but he's at a weaker division. The The bantamweight is super weak. Bantam, not that ban, flyweight's really weak, which we really don't care about. And obviously they didn't care enough where they let Mighty Mouse, the greatest of all time go. Um, so it's just at that lightweight, and then when you start talk, pooling in other combat athletes, as far as boxing and Lomachenko, and uh, you know, you look at some of these guys, who I think uh, Cejudo only made one Olympic team, missed one, made one, won gold. There's guys who've made four Olympic teams. There's guys who have medaled four times. So that, you know, it's just how you're gonna weigh things. Because if you're going just off wrestling, there's guys who have way more impressive wrestling records who never went to the UFC, so it's tough. And you look at Lomachenko, what he, how he's taken the world by storm in boxing, how he fought for world championship uh, in boxing, which is hard to do with seven fights. You know, it's just combat. And also, uh, wrestling's been around for, oh, I don't know, 1,000 years. Boxing's been around for 1,000 years. MMA's been around for seven days. You know, so it's it's not that impressive. The guys he's beating. Is he in the conversation of pound for pound great? Hell yeah, he's right up there. But is what Henry Cejudo, what he's doing in mixed martial arts, is it more impressive when, than what Khabib's doing? Khabib's fighting the best of the best at 155, the deepest division in the world. Hasn't lost a round. Hasn't lost a round. Hasn't lost a round. Um, and this has been my argument for I don't know how many years. Also, I always give the heavier weights more uh accolades and more of an argument when it comes to pound for pound great john jones is pound for pound great john jones is the baddest man on the planet because he fights at light heavyweight he fought at a time when light heavyweight really meant something destroyed everybody destroyed everyone and his margin of error is this this much so henry cejudo started off slow right start off really slow against marlin got lit up if john jones Starts off slow against Gustin, DC. If you get into heavyweight, if you start off slow against uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson, you're not making it out of that first round. It does not work like that. If you have an off night early on in the heavyweight or light heavyweight, some middleweights, especially fight style Ben or Whitaker, you're not making out of that first round. You have your margin of error is so small. So when Henry Suda went in there and was like trying to figure out and he was hurt and was getting lit up, I'm like, God, how's he going to do it? That fight doesn't get out of the first round of the heavyweights or the light heavyweights. Gus Fing's not let, if John had an off night and had two rolled ankles where the fuck Henry Suda had and came in there and just let it get, get picked apart from the outside, it's game over. So that's why 
Henry Sudo, very impressive. Top three. Uh, if he keeps going, he, he could definitely make case for the pound for pound number one right now. But uh, he has more work to do. But because you're at a you're a bantamweight and flyweight, you're never going to be number one. It just doesn't work like that. I don't think. Unfortunately, it just doesn't. I've never said I never thought Mighty Mouse was number one pound for pound great because the level of competition, margin of error, and he's been doing it for how long? John is the best to ever grace the octagon. His record proves it, and his margin of error is so small. John never has an off night, never has an off round, ever, because he'd lose, he'd get knocked out. What DC's done at heavyweight, never had an off night. You know what happens when you have an off night or when you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that? Ask Stipe against DC. Stipe was like, oh, let me try it out. Game over, okay, try it out. You got knocked out. How about Verdum against Stipe? Okay, I'm gonna rush him. I'm having, I'm, I, I'm gonna hurry this up. I'm, okay, you lost. But if Henry Cejudo rushes Marlon, you're not losing. Oh, fuck, I just got hit in the face. All right, don't do that again. Heavyweight, oh, I got hit in the face. It's over, I gotta wait eight months to get a rematch or some shit like that. You, you learn by losing. In the smaller weight classes, you learn by getting hit readjusting and continuing to fight it's a different they're almost different games that's why the the heavier weight classes will always hold more ground when it comes to pound for pound grades and then also you look at amanda nunez you look at her record granted it's female so the pool's even way less than male so but as far as female she's pound for pound great of all time but you can't have pound for pound great fighter you, you can't include the female with the men you just can't they're completely different pools. But let's go over Amanda Nunes' record. Chris Cyborg, ever heard of her? Some were saying the greatest female combat athlete of all time. She knocked her out in 50 seconds. Raquel Pennington, again, that shit happens. Shevchenko, who has just balls deep on, who she beat in uh, split decision second time, mind you. Ronda Rousey, ever heard of her? Some think she's the greatest, was the greatest of all time. She got starched in 48 seconds. So remember the faces of the faces of female combat sports by far the most famous it, when it when it just pops in your head Misha Tate right by far Misha Tate Ronda Rousey Chris Cyborg put them in whatever order you want probably goes Ronda Cyborg Misha Tate as far as fame goes right well let's go through those Misha Tate she starched in three minutes rear naked choke uh, I think it was UFC 200 with the yellow mat that still ruins my day. Um, then she went on to fight Ronda Rousey. Big fight, right? Big fight, man. Ronda's comeback. The UFC only marketed Ronda Rousey. What happened there? 48 seconds starched. Ronda never fought again. Went into her hole. Didn't want to play ball anymore. Chris Cyborg. All right, all right, here we go, man. This is featherweight championship. She's going She's going up in weight. There's no way she can compete with her. I didn't think Amanda was gonna win this fight. I thought she was gonna get knocked out. 50 seconds she starches that girl. 50 seconds. It's not, when it comes to men, you can have argument pound for pound greats. When it comes to females, it's a fucking landslide. She's the Michael Phelps. She's the Lindsey Vaughn. That's how good that she's the Cheryl swoops of women's combat sports. It's, it's a not even up for debate, but when you add pound for pound, great men and women, which is stupid to do, she's somewhere top five, as far as just females go, it's not, there's not a, they're, they're not even, there's no race. There's no race to be had. Chris Cyborg is the greatest female combat sports fighter of all time, all time. Good day. Dude, that's what I say. Cyborg. My bad. I was looking at Cyborg's name. Yeah. That's why I said that. Um, yeah, not even close. The pound for pound argument is fun to have, but um, we go pound for pound. It's probably John, uh, Khabib, DC, and then you know Henry Sudo's in there somewhere. You got the other guys, but how, how, the UFC has it. DC number one. Well, it's kind of tough, though, you know? And, I mean, we saw him lose twice to a guy named John Jones. You have it two. You get Khabib three. That's fine. Cejudo four. Max Holloway, Manny Nunes, Kamara, Dustin Poirier, Connor, Steve Bay, Tony. 
How Tony's not higher on that list, I don't know. I don't get how. That doesn't make sense to me. How do you have Tony at 12? You have Connor at 9 and Dustin at 8. Or Kumar Usman at 7. That's strange. These Very lists strange. are these lists are just something for us to reference. They're not like they know be all either. No one really gives a fuck. Everyone misses it. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.